The future is here. In the early days, the internet was referred to as the information superhighway, but has since evolved into a platform that connects people with one another in real time. Nowadays, Internet of Things devices are taking the world by storm, and we even have virtual assistants at our disposal. The problem is, we allow these devices into our homes without even fully knowing what they're doing nor whom they ultimately serve. But despite their mysterious nature, these assistants seem fairly helpful. So, it's fine to give up a bit of our privacy in exchange for being able to make use of a neat robot that's eager to do our bidding. Right? Right? Now, we shouldn't be so eager to give up our privacy. Thankfully, Mycroft makes a virtual assistant that works for us, and their Mimic 3 technology, which is out right now, gives us even more control than we previously had. So let's check it out. Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, what we're going to do is take a look at Mimic 3, which is the text-to-speech engine for Mycroft. And not only are we going to see Mimic 3 in action, I'm going to show you how to install it, how to set it up, some example commands. It's going to be a lot of fun. And best of all, Mimic 3 is open source, so you'll have access to all of the source code as well as binary packages that you can install, among other ways to get it going on your machine. And we're going to take an in-depth look at how it actually works, and it's going to be a ton of fun. In addition, I'm going to have time codes in the description down below that you could use to get right to the section that most interests you. But first, what exactly is Mycroft? Well, Mycroft is a virtual assistant, not completely unlike Amazon Echo, but what is unlike Amazon Echo is that it works for us. And considering that Mycroft is open source, that makes it a very good alternative for those of us that want to benefit from a virtual assistant, but without giving up our privacy. You could get started with Mycroft by purchasing a pre-made unit, or you could download its components and set it up on a Raspberry Pi or even on your desktop. And soon, a new Mycroft device will be released dubbed the Mark II. It's actually expected to come out this fall, and it's going to take Mycroft to the next level. And you never know, I might even sneak in a Mark II prototype at some point in this video. And Mycroft is no stranger to Learn Linux TV. In fact, you can see it right now in the background behind my left shoulder. Hello, my name is Mycroft. So I'm really excited to get started covering Mycroft with this video. And considering that Mycroft is open source, that makes it a very good alternative for those of us that want to benefit from a virtual assistant, but without giving up our privacy. And it's also a great way to get involved and to, you know, join a project because there's no greater way to learn software engineering than actually joining a real project. And considering the source code is right out there in the open, you have full access to check it out. Now, even though Mycroft is getting its formal introduction today, I actually featured it in an April Fool's joke video that I did a couple of years ago. In that video, I actually had Mycroft take over the studio and review Debian. I own this studio now, as well as his laptops. You spin me right round, baby right round like a record, baby right round round round. So I wiped his hard disk and didn't think twice about it. And later on, I decided to feature Mycroft again, but this time, I had Mycroft help me review a Linux distribution, and that was a lot of fun as well. And each of the choices for your desktop environment are perfectly valid. So, what's your favorite desktop environment? I don't need a desktop environment. Command line for the win. Okay, so he's one of those people. Got it. And I was able to do this because I have full access to Mycroft's code, and because of that, I can study how it works internally. In those videos, I was able to access Mycroft via SSH, and by doing so, that enabled me to give it a personality of its own in order to enable it to act out a character in a video with its own narrative. Hello, my name is Mycroft. Try doing that with a proprietary solution. You totally can't. Anyway, I'm a huge fan of Mycroft, and I'm really excited to officially cover it on this channel. You guys have been asking about this for quite some time, and I'm super excited to finally deliver. Now, I figured that the best place to start is by going over the text-to-speech engine, and that gives you an idea of how Mycroft works internally. But even more relevant is the fact that Mimic 3 is out today, 
which is a new version of the technology that powers Mycroft, and this version, you're able to use it completely offline. This means that you will not actually have to send requests to the cloud for processing, all the processing can be done locally. And when I said that Mimic 3 is available right now, I mean that literally. It's available right now. The release was actually timed with this video, so the minute that this video came out was actually when Mimic 3 was released. You could download the packages for Mimic 3, you could check out the source code, and it's a lot of fun. I highly recommend you check it out. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to show you some examples, and I'm really excited to do this because it's a fun project and I think you're going to love it. Let's get started. Now, what you're seeing right here are two Mycroft units. On the left-hand side, we have the Mark 1. This is the one that I've purchased quite some time ago and has been in the background of many videos on this channel. The unit on the right is a very early prototype of the Mark II, and the final version of that device is due for release in September. The prototype that I have is quite different than what's expected with the final product, but I figured if I had a prototype, I might as well show it off. Did you hear that Internet Explorer has been discontinued by Microsoft? I am not familiar with Internet Explorer. I will search for info. Info found. Internet Explorer was a substandard web browser with minimal appeal. I was unfamiliar with it due to my being a Linux device, and no native Linux build of Internet Explorer was released. Anyway, the conversation between the two units was one that I scripted myself, and I was able to do that because I have full access to these devices. Earlier, I mentioned that I could use SSH to connect to them, and that's absolutely true. That's not really something that you generally have available to you when it comes to Internet of Things devices, at least the ones that are not open source. And not only do I have access to connect to these devices via SSH, I also have access to an API, and with that API, I could do all sorts of things. I even have access to their source code, which is really cool. And the scenario that you just saw isn't all that different from the April Fool's video that I mentioned earlier. With that video, I was able to SSH into my Mycroft unit and make him say whatever I wanted him to. It was a lot of fun. And I have to say, Debian works quite well on Jay's laptop. Why the heck doesn't he use it as his daily driver? Since Mycroft is open source, I was able to give my device a personality of its own and script its responses, making it appear as though it was an actual conversation. If this isn't a really cool example of how fun open source software can be, then I don't know what is. Now, with the Internet Explorer gag that I showed you guys earlier, that was done with Mimic 3. There's different ways that we can interact with Mimic 3. I mean, yeah, it's integrated into the Mark II that's coming out very soon, but again, you don't have to buy anything to use Mimic 3. You can just download the packages, you can download the source code. It's available right now and it's completely at your disposal. But what you just saw was another example of the power of open source because without that, I probably wouldn't have been able to do what I've just done, or at least not as easily. Now, when it comes to earlier versions of Mycroft, voice processing was done in the cloud. This was due to the limited horsepower of the Raspberry Pi platform at the time, and Raspberry Pis are the platform on which Mycroft devices are based, and now that we have newer Pi devices that contain even more capable CPUs, it's no longer required to send information to the cloud in order to get the device to perform a requested action. And considering that the upcoming Mark II device will be powered by Mimic 3, that means you'll be able to use Mycroft to do some really cool things, even when it's offline. And as another example of this, what I'm going to do right now is actually have Mycroft promote my new book. Jay wanted me to mention his new book. Doesn't he have anything better for me to do? But I digress. Mastering Ubuntu Server 4th Edition is coming soon. The new edition covers Ubuntu 2204. Jay says the book is great. He's quite fond of it, actually. I think he may be obsessed with it. Am I getting paid for this? Thanks, Mycroft. I really appreciate that. Now, let's see another example of Mimic 3 in action. So what you're seeing on the screen right now is a web server but not just any web server, this one is actually running on my Mark II prototype. And this particular web console is just one of the methods that you can use to interact with Mimic 3. So right there in your web browser, you can actually synthesize speech. Mimic 3 is a lot of fun to work with. But that's not all. Mimic 3 also exposes an API, and you can use that API to do the same thing, or 
You could even send your request to a Mycroft device and have it speak whatever you would like it to say. So what you've just seen was another demonstration of Mimic 3. I was able to use it to synthesize speech and, well, make it say exactly what I wanted it to. Now, when it comes to installing Mimic 3, that's very easy. Like I mentioned before, there's packages available. So to get started, what you could do is download one of the packages that were made available for Mimic 3, whatever package is most appropriate for your platform. And then with that, you can get started immediately. After installing Mimic 3, you have available the Mimic 3 command, and you could use that command to do all sorts of things. There's also a Docker container available, and even a Python package. If you'd like to build it yourself, there's source code available as well. So depending on how you'd like to get started, there's multiple ways that you could do that. Anyway, here I have Mimic 3 installed, and that gives me access to the Mimic 3 command. This allows me to provide Mimic 3 with a text string, and then it could turn that string into synthesized audio. Hello world. As you can see, I was able to synthesize speech right from the command line. After installing Mimic 3, I gave it some text and it in turn created a WAV file for me that contains the string that I typed in but synthesized into an actual vocal recording. In addition to that, if you're running Mimic 3 on a device with speakers, you know, like a notebook or a desktop, you can actually send the synthesized audio directly to your output device. Now, I think it's really cool that the Mimic 3 technology is available separately from the Mark II device that it powers. That means that you actually don't need to buy a single thing. You could just download Mimic 3 and use it locally. You have full access to it. Now, of course, I will be covering the Mark II device as soon as it's available, so definitely stay tuned for that. But one of the biggest things that I'm most excited about is the fact that Mimic 3 allows the Mark II to run without the cloud. Now, personally, I don't have anything against the cloud, but I totally understand that some people might be burned out on that because, you know, if you've purchased something like the Amazon Echo, then there might be something in the back of the mind, maybe some kind of thoughts about what exactly is it doing with my personal information? That's really not an easy thought. Now, with Mycroft being open source, I don't feel like we have anything to worry about. However, if you do, in the back of your mind, you know, have some kind of hesitation about Internet of Things devices, I don't blame you. But the fact that Mimic 3 and by, you know, association, the Mark II can actually process audio without a connection to the cloud, that actually builds a lot more trust. But what's even more awesome is the fact that you can get involved and help develop Mimic 3. And by getting involved, you can actually have your place in the history of virtual assistants and the eventual takeover of open source virtual assistants. The first step when it comes to getting involved is to simply install Mimic 3 and try it out. Earlier in the video, I showed you guys how to set it up. It's simply a matter of installing the appropriate package. And if you're following along with me and you installed it along with me, then that box is already checked. The next step after that is to familiarize yourself with the documentation as well as the community. The documentation will give you even more examples that you could use when it comes to learning the platform and, well, having fun. After you check out the documentation, the source code for Mimic 3 is available right on GitHub, which is where you can submit pull requests to help develop the project. But even if you aren't a software engineer, you can help in other ways, such as, you know, contributing to the voices, writing documentation. There's just many ways to get involved, and a project like this is going to need community volunteers in order to make this happen. Definitely check out the links in the description, which is exactly where I'm going to add everything you need in order to get started. So I'm really excited to cover Mycroft on this channel. If you guys want to see me cover Mycroft in more detail, definitely click that like button if you like this video, because that's how you could tell me that I should continue with this series. In today's video, you saw Mimic 3 in action, and later on, maybe I'll show you the final product when it comes to the Mark II as soon as that's released. But regardless, you've just had a taste of the Mark II, because Mimic 3, like I mentioned before, is exactly what powers it when it comes to its text-to-speech engine. I'm really excited about Mycroft in general. I've been a fan of it for quite a long time. I think hundreds of videos have been produced with Mycroft in the background at this point, and you guys have been asking about it over and over again, so I know you guys are interested, and I can't wait to do more videos on the subject. Anyway, let me know what you guys want to see in the description down below. I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say, and be sure to click that subscribe button, because when I have the next Mycroft video available, you'll be the first to see it. Thanks again, guys. I really appreciate you checking out this video, and I'll see you again very soon.